States and cities across the country are filing lawsuits against the makers and distributors of opioid painkillers. Opioid addiction and overdose has become one of the biggest health emergencies of modern times. And these lawsuits may be the only way to end the cycle of death that Big Pharma has started. And they know they've started it. Peter, I look at this lawsuit that's been filed in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. If you really distill what's happened in this lawsuit, what they're saying, they're saying that the, the industry knew that, the, that the, uh, they were creating pill mills. And they're saying that they knew that there was diversion taking place where it was being sold as a street drug. And in fact, if you really incorporate everything, every part of this, they're actually saying that these distributors like McKesson built into their business plan, understand this is serious, built into this business plan the, the uh, illegal use of drugs. Now, th there's no way to read this and, and, and escape that. They're saying they considered, yes, we know the pill mills are out there. They considered, yes, we know we're selling 10 times the amount of drugs we should be selling. And they're saying they thought about it and they concluded that that was part of the business plan they would use going forward. It's nothing more than a drug cartel. It, it, it's a legalized uh, drug dealer uh, cloaked in a position of trust that they've abused. They've taken that position. They are supposed to be protecting the people in our cities and communities and making sure that the number of pills is manageable, making sure that they're taking care of the, uh, the people in those areas. They've betrayed that trust and capitalized on their bottom line, selling and pushing as many drugs as they can into these communities. They're drug dealers wearing suits. Yeah, but what, what is so remarkable about this pleading, and I've seen in other states are saying sure. the same thing. They're not just saying this was done by mistake. Oh, no. Okay, so year one, the drug company says, you know, we can't be sure how this is going to be, how this is going to spin out of control. Year two, let's give them year two. Year three, they're meeting in closed doors, and they're saying, wow, look at how many drugs we're selling. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, one way we're selling drugs is through pill mills. Another way we're selling drugs is through street drugs. And you know what? Let's now make that part of our business plan. Right. Now, that is very serious business. That's no difference from uh, Mexican cartels coming to the United no, States and selling it's really drugs. Not. The, the actual the term that you, you hear a lot of people using is that uh, McKesson and some of these huge drug distributors, which is the defendant in the uh, Attorney General Bashir's suit in Kentucky, that they're turning a blind eye. That's, that's the term you, you hear repeated. They're turning a blind eye. No. They're turning, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. It's worse than that. It's way worse than that. At the end of the day, and it's the words you just used, it's not turning a blind eye. It's, it's not only embracing the business model, but targeting those areas in the epicenter, Appalachia, Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Alabama, Georgia, all the way down to the Florida Panhandle, identifying those as target areas, capitalizing on those areas, and recognizing that's where we can make the most money all in a position of trust bestowed upon them by Congress. Okay, now let, let me throw this out here because everybody always misses this, okay? McKesson, let's just take McKesson. Mm -hmm. McKesson was a distributor. You know, Purdue made the drug, they gave it to McKesson, they gave it to Cardinal, they gave right. it to Amerisource, all these distributor companies, and they said, here, you go sell the drug. Now, the government said, yeah, we're going to allow you to be a distributor, but here's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. If you're a distributor... You have a responsibility to monitor what's happening, and if you see or suspect, it's very, statute is unbelievable on this. It's, it, it says if you suspect that there is some type of illegal use going on through a pill mill, through street drugs, then you have an affirmative duty to step in and do something about it. Now, that's very clear. That's what the law is. Mm -hmm. Now, the, you have McKesson that went ahead and paid a $150 million fine in 2017, admitting that they didn't do that, that right. they, they, they did not comply with the statute because what they saw is they saw people right in the, right in the city. They saw a business the, opportunity. They saw yeah, a huge business opportunity. And so they said, well, we're going to get into the drug addiction right. business. Right. You know, that's going to be part of We are now a drug... And, and we, we, what, what's crazy to me is we not only allowed them, but we gave them the ticket that said, here's your entry pass. 
You are the beat cop that's supposed to be protecting people. And it's like a beat cop. It's like our police force selling drugs. We put them in a position of trust. Congress said, here's your ticket. Here's your license. They have to go through a whole process. There's only 800 of them. Three of them dominate 85, 90% of the market share. And they are put in this position that says, you are here to protect our kids. You're here to protect our, our young people. And what have you done? You've, you've taken that and turned it on its head, all the put money in their in their pockets at the end of the day, and sold to the people that they were there to protect. Okay, let me tell you it's the really, you, you want to hear the ugly part of it? There was a consortium of attorney generals from all over the United States. Mm -hmm. What year was it? They got together. They oh, said, it's like 05 or 05. 06. They said, well, we're going to solve this problem. We're, we're really going to. We're going to do our job right and we're going to invest. In, understand, these are politicos. These are nothing more than they want to be. A, they want, Next thing they want to be is governor or they want to be a senator. And right now they're attorney general and they're using this as the platform to, for their next political office. So these cats get together and they say, you know what? Let's, let's, uh, do, let, let's see if we can do something about this. Well, they didn't really mean stopping the problem. Right. Every attorney general that participated in that accepted a total of $25 million from these thugs, these corporate cabal criminals, they accepted $25 million as a settlement and let these criminals go free. They had all the information. They had the same information that, these, that, that we have today. Well, when you put it in perspective, uh, $25 million may sound like a, like a bunch to some people. However... That's for the entire nation. That, that's exactly right. And McKesson's CEO, which is one of the big three, one of the ones with the, uh, uh, the total of 85 to 90% market share, their CEO made $160 million. So divide that up. That's $13, $14 <laughs> million a month. So the fines for all three equaled a month and a half, two months pay for McKesson's CEO. Yeah. I mean, it's pencil money. Yeah. It's, it's and, nothing. And you know the ugly part about it, again, those same attorney generals, the same scam, they're, they're at it again. The attorney generals want to say, oh, we solved this problem. We, we, you know, we made them pay $50 million this time. They've made $50 million while you and I have been sitting here talking. The difference is this time that the communities and cities around the country, seeing what happened last time, seeing what happened in some of these other cases, Don't. and said, enough's enough. We're going to file our own claim. These are going to be community-based solutions to fix community-based problems, not letting... AG, you know, stands yeah. for aspiring governor. Not let some politician come Take in and fix away. it. We're going to push our own problems. Yeah.